this is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. Hello and welcome to the Unstoppable Indians. Every week we take a journey into the life of an outstanding Indian, a person whose talent, acumen or moral example is transforming India. The best, the finest from every field join me, Manvi Dhillon, on this show to share their life story, their journey to success, some of the knocks along the way, what made them get up and keep going, what makes them an unstoppable Indian. My guest today is a person who's been dubbed as the fastest Indian in the world. He's got a need for speed and he made history in Indian motorsports when uh, he became India's first Formula One driver. Naren Karthikeyan, thank you very much for joining me today thank on you. The Unstoppable Indians. Thank you. We're here in Coimbatore, your hometown. That's why I'm tempted to start right at the very beginning. Uh, what was your first brush? How old were you when you had your first brush and that first tingle of excitement? as far as motorsports goes? Um, I think I was always interested in the sport as <clears throat> far as I can remember because my dad uh, rallied a lot and uh, I think I went to one of the Sholavaram races when I was six, seven years old. So I remember that part for sure and uh, I got hooked onto it from then onwards. Um, but yeah, uh, as I told you, as far as I can remember, I was always interested in speed and motorsport and, and, and so on. When did it start becoming a little more tangible, the realization that perhaps you were going to spend the rest of your life pursuing this love, this fascination? When did that moment come? I think I always had this very, very clear in my mind that <clears throat> I was going to become a professional race car driver and I'm going to be the first Indian Formula One driver. The day I sat in the car, I, I, knew, uh, you know, I knew what I wanted and I was very focused on this. Um, yeah, I, I, when I started off racing, I mean, it was very different then to now. Um, but um, anyway, against all odds, I made it and um, I'm living my dream now. How old were you when you started racing act actually? Um, I think my first race was uh, in 92 December, so I would have been 15 years old. Um, so it was um, something that I thought, um, you know, I can, uh, you know, do well at. and. Uh, I, as I told you from the day go, I wanted to go all the way and that was only the, that was the focus. My God, 15, I can't even imagine or fathom what, uh, what kind of conviction it needs to know what you want to do at 15. Tell me, there must have been some skepticism in your family saying, Narena, are you sure you really want to do this? I mean, it's great to have a hobby, but to put your entire life into this, was there some skepticism? Yeah, all the school teachers and everyone thought I was pretty crazy as a boy. And uh, um, but I think my family, my dad especially, he was in the sport, and he realized that you know I wanted to, you know, take this up as a pro profession. Um, the problem was at that time there was no set path. No Indian ever, ever had ever done this before. Um, so of course, I mean, you know, when they when the relatives asked them, you know, what they're doing with their son, they felt quite, uh, um, you know, sheepish. Not, not, <laughs> not sure about what they were doing. But uh, anyway, in the end, it, it all worked out fine. You know, I'm trying to make this real. I mean, motorsport has made so much headway in the last 15 years. But the period that we're talking about, I'm trying to understand, like, where did you practice? Where did you know where to get the basics going? I mean, how did you do that? Sure, you had your father backing you, but what were those basic practical problems that you faced when uh, you started out? <clears throat> well, I, I got a go-kart made uh, in my father's garage and uh, I used to drive it inside the driveway in my house and that's how I started off. Uh, but um, a group of friends, my cousins, everyone were a little bit um, um, in the, into, into this kind of thing. Uh, so it was a bit easier, but um, <clears throat> I think, you know, it, I, nobody knew what ra motor racing was. Uh, very, very few knew about Atten Senna at that time, mm. uh, who was, you know, the world champion. And it made big news when he died. So that's, that's how I think motorsport got off in India, in the, uh, Formula One at least. 94 was when you stepped onto the world stage. And, you know, this is asking a lot because I'm, I'm going to ask you to rewind to how it felt to take your first steps in the global arena. Again, I had no karting background and uh, I had to go away from, from India and, and live in uh, England. 
um, you know and it was quite difficult because I was uh, what 16 17 years old then and um, I you know I didn't uh, yeah, I've been on holidays for a month or so but to live there was quite difficult away from my family and stuff and then again you know the, as an Indian nobody had seen a, an Indian race in, uh, in in this kind of a, in this level so they accepted you but uh, I think towards the end when I was really fast and when I won races that's when um, I think people realized that uh, I was a good driver and um, had the <coughs> talent to go go all the way. 2001 you again had an important turning point you tested a Formula One car 2005 you made your Formula One debut is it fair to say that those were the most momentous moments? Well I think Every win you, you 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 have in your career, uh, no matter how big or small it is, it's pretty special. But uh, these are big moments in, in your career. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 2001, when I tested for the Jaguar team. I mean, uh, as a kid, you 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 grow up watching the Jaguar cars winning in Le Mans and so on, and to drive the, that Formula One car was a great opportunity for me. And uh, uh, and then when when you drive a Formula One car for the first time, then you want to want to make it you know for more and you want to put more commitment and so on as when you taste the power and the excitement and everything so it made me work harder uh, and uh, the, then as, uh, um, I made my debut in 2005 in, with, the, with the Jordan team it was a small team and um, I did the best I could and uh, we had some pretty amazing results <coughs> like uh, the qualifying session in Melbourne always sticks out that was very special for me in the wet um, uh, I, I was in front of Michael Schumacher and qualifying. So yeah. you know, as a rookie, it was uh, it was great, a uh, great feeling. And and then I had two great years at Williams, and I didn't want to be a test driver anymore. So I had to race something, and A1 was a high-profile championship, and I got into it. And I'm winning races for India. And uh, the biggest difference between Formula One and A1 is uh, when you go to an A1 race, you have the opportunity to win that race. In Formula One, unless you drive for a McLaren or a Ferrari, it's very very difficult. And um, I'm going to talk about A1 in greater detail, but what is the psyche? What does it take to be a racer of that standard? Uh, what, if I had to deconstruct I think you? I think the biggest thing is obviously um, your mental, uh, like any, any sport, I think you have to have a very strong head. Um, and of course you need a lot of reflexes and this and and uh, you know thankfully I had I had the speed I didn't have to work hard at it fitness everything plays an important role so the whole when you have the whole package then everything comes together nicely and and then you can hone it obviously and experience is the best way the more and more you drive different types of cars I think you get a vast knowledge on 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 on, on the racing and and I think you can build up from that you set my mind off in so many different directions, I have to address each one of them. Is there a daily regimen that you follow? Is it strict? Is it pretty rigorous? Yeah, off-season we do a lot of um, uh, fitness work, um, especially now from June to August before the season kicks off again. Um, and then we tone it down a bit because you don't, uh, you, we're driving the car makes you fit. Um, so now we, we have like three hour sessions a day, five days, sometimes six days a week. Um, I train with a very uh, good trainer from um, uh, from Chennai, uh, Ramji Srinivasan. He trains uh, some of the famous cricketers in India, uh, and he updates himself with motorsport, uh, the the training involved and everything. So he travels with me as a dietitian and everything else. So it's been working very well. I, I must say I'm the fittest I've ever been. Uh, so this year is going to be quite good for me. <laughs> I can see from that smile on your face that you're excited about this year but the other thought that suddenly struck me was I'm sure there's always a, a certain degree of getting to know the car that you're going to drive or once you've driven a Formula One car it's pretty much uh, standard after that what is that relationship building between you and the car or is there any I yeah there's a lot of relationship between me car and the engineer so you need to give the right feedback to the engineer and, and I think I became very good at this when I had my stints with Williams and um, Williams F1 in 2006 and 7. Um, <coughs> I can relate quite accurate things to the engineer and uh, get the car working and um, um, and that's how I think last year I came um, you know in a, into a team that was um, 
struggling the A1 team India and we turned it around and we became a force to be reckoned with in the end. So uh, we won, won two races, one in England and one in China um, and uh, put it in the top 10 in the championship. Obviously now we have to improve on it. Uh, but as you said, it's very important to understand um, the mechanical the engineering of the car, but you don't work on it physically, but uh, you need to relate the right things and uh, get it working to your driving style and, and that's how you get the results.